In the Linux community, I would say one of the things I'm most known for are standalone window managers. I'm the window manager guy, right? And I've covered probably like 20 window managers on camera, but here, especially in the last couple of years, the window manager I've lived in the most is Xmonad, which is a tiling window manager that's written and configured in the Haskell programming language. And I love Xmonad. Xmonad has probably been my favorite window manager for at least a decade or more. Xmonad's kind of my jam, but I do like to window manager hop on occasion. And even though you guys haven't seen it on video because my production workstation here is set up with all my OBS scenes to work in Xmonad, I always log into Xmonad to make my videos, but I actually haven't been living in Xmonad. For the last six weeks, I've actually been living in a different window manager, one I've used before, but I wanted to revisit. And I've been living in BSPWM for the last six weeks or so. Let me switch over to my desktop. This is BSPWM running here. This is Polybar at the top. I had to configure Polybar uh, a couple of months back to work with Xmonad because Xmobar was having some issues. A, a recent update to Xmobar kind of broke my Xmobar config. So I decided I was going to configure Xmonad to use Polybar. But Polybar really is kind of designed for manual tilers and especially Polybar is designed to work with BSPWM. That's the bar everybody uses for BSPWM. So I was like, well, if I'm going to take the time to configure Polybar, I might as well get back into BSPWM for a while. And for the last six weeks, this is actually what I have been living in day to day on my machine at the house, my computer at the house, as well as sometimes my workstation here, except when I have to record, then I'll log into Xmonad, but BSPWM is really just lovely. Uh, it's you it got those weird default layout. It's not quite master and stack, right? It's uh, what it, I, I want to say. Well, I can make things full screen, but let me open. It just kind of dwindles toward the corner, right? That's a, a layout like in the Awesome Window Manager and other dynamic tilers that I've used. They call this like a dwindle layout where it just kind of dwindles smaller and smaller into the corner of the screen. And that's a layout is not very useful in my opinion. I like the master and stack layout, which it starts out kind of like a master and stack. You get the main window, then you get two here. It's only when you open that fourth window that things get a little weird. Now the windows are really a little too small, but honestly, I rarely have more than three windows open on a single workspace. So honestly, the default layout for BSPWM has not been an issue for me. Honestly, I, I've mentioned this on camera before, for, for pretty much every tiling window manager I've ever used, I always say, really, I only need three layouts. I need a master and stack layout, I need a full screen or monocle layout where it's a single window full screen, and I need a floating layout because some programs just have to be floated, right? And you get all that with BSPWM. Here's that default layout, but if I wanted a full screen, a, a monocle, a, a full screen mode, I have this set to super space in my config. I can just make the window that has focus full screen. When I want to get back to that tiling layout, I just do super space again, and it gets back to the tiling layout. If I want to float a window, whichever window has focus, I'll do this window here, super S, We'll pull that window out of the tiling layout, and now it's a floating window. If I want to put it back into the tiling layout, I could do Super T, and it forces it back into the tiling mode. And I use Super Shift C to close my windows. I try to keep my key bindings the same in all my tiling window manager configs, just for consistency. Also, as more and more of these things make their way into DTOS, and I've already kind of packaged BSPWM for DTOS. It's already available for installation. I haven't done a video on it, so I'm not sure how well it works just yet. I need to do some testing, but it's there in the repository if you guys want it. But I want to make sure that all of these tiling window managers that I put in DTOS use the same key bindings as much as possible. So super enter will open a terminal and all of them. Super shift C will close the window with focus and all of them. Super shift R reloads the window manager and all of them, yada, yada, yada. Now, of course, that's not entirely possible. Y you can't make all the key bindings the same in every window manager because some of them have different functions than others. Some of them don't have a function that another tiling window manager will have. And BSPWM, I will say, does have less 
to it <laughs> than some of the more mature window managers, things like Xmonad and things like the awesome window manager, for example, or Qtile, which are the three window managers that were already packaged for DTOS. They have big communities around. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Xmonad and Awesome have been around for like, like 12 years, 15 years. And you now BSPWM is a newer project, but also uh, just because of the fervent community around things like Xmonad, for example, which is written in Haskell, the Haskell community is very passionate about things. You know, you've got a lot of third party modules and libraries for something like Xmonad, where BSPWM is very simplistic and minimal. So there's certain things that I can do in Xmonad that I just can't get done with BSPWM. But for the most part, all the basic functionality that you expect a tiling window manager to have, it's here. Now, what differentiates BSPWM from things like Xmonad, Awesome, and Qtile? Well, Xmonad and Qtile, they handle workspaces very differently than something like Awesome or something like BSPWM. So Xmonad and Qtile, they have essentially nine workspaces that are shared across all of your monitors, uh, right? You just have one set of workspaces shared across all of your monitors where things like Awesome and BSPWM, you have a set of workspaces that is dedicated to each monitor. So I have one through nine right here. We're looking at the second of my three monitors. Workspaces one through nine on the second monitor are not workspaces one through nine on the first monitor. And they're not workspaces one through nine on the third monitor. Essentially, I have 27 workspaces because I have one through nine on each monitor. Do I need all of those workspaces? Not necessarily. I would prefer actually them just to be shared across all the monitors. That makes more sense to me, although I don't mind this. Uh, it's just a personal preference. It, it doesn't get in the way, though. I don't find this weird. I don't find it. Uh, I don't find that it inhibits me in any way. Now, of course, that changes a little bit of the workflow because used to I could have this window here and in Xmonad, because the workspaces are shared across all the monitors, if I switch to a workspace that's on monitor one, this window just goes to monitor one because the workspaces just swap with each other. They just they flip and it's really cool and it makes a lot of sense once you get used to it. Where here, this is a on workspace one of nine on this monitor. Well, how do I send it to workspace one? And it's a different workspace one on this monitor. Well, I would have to get focus on this window. I have to do something like super shift H to, to send it left, or I could just drag it with the mouse. So I could uh, hold the super key and drag it and just drag it to each monitor. I just keep dragging it around to every monitor. I think I had a key binding super shift uh, comma would take that yeah, to a different workspace that actually moved the window to my third monitor, but because it moved it to the third monitor, it replaced it with PC Man FM that I had over on that monitor. That, that's weird, right? It's kind of different kind of functionality that I'm not quite used to, right? This is, it's a little different. So that's the only thing, and you know, when you swap between these window managers, it's really easy actually to swap between Xmonad and Qtile, because they're essentially, Qtile's an ex, almost an exact clone of Xmonad, just written in Python. And Awesome is very similar to Xmonad as well, because they're all dynamic tilers. BSPWM is a manual tiler, meaning you could actually on the fly decide where the next window will open. Well, I'm gonna focus on this first window, and if I do super control, and I believe, is it super control, and I, I gotta look up I never use pre-selection. Super control H, J, K, L. So if I do super control L for right, you can see that that space has been divided into two columns. Now you, you can see the next window, if I do super enter to open another terminal, it's going to open right there in that pre-selected right direction. If I did super control J for down, you can see now I could put a window there. Now, I never use that. Uh, I, I really... Manual tilers, they're kind of neat, things like i3, things like BSPWM, but how often do you really want to force a window in a spot? Typically, on the fly, I'm working. I just want to open windows, and with a dynamic tiler, there's predefined layouts, and because you have those predefined layouts, you always know where the window's going to open. And if for some reason it opens in a spot that's not quite where you want it, once it opens, then Super Shift J and K to just move it through the stack to the spot that you do want it. That makes a lot more sense to me because honestly, the pre-selection thing is confusing. 
It really is. <laughs> like I couldn't even remember the key bindings. I've been using this thing for six weeks and yeah, I haven't touched pre-selection. So neat feature. I mean, it's a cool feature. I don't mind that it's it's there. It's just how many people would use that? I would think not very many. Now, one function that is available in Xmonad, Qtile, and Awesome that I find I use all the time. I, I, I literally use it on a, a daily basis uh, is the ability to shrink and expand windows. So if I had two windows open side by side, the ability to make one a little bigger than the other to adjust that size. And the way this is done in Xmonad and Qtile and Awesome is I could do Super H or Super L, depending on whether I want to move it left or right, whether I want the window to shrink or expand, right? And that's how I have that set. And it makes sense. It's very intuitive. It's a little clunky and a little weird in BSPWM because the key bindings I'm using are Control Alt and then H, J, K, L. So you can actually shrink and expand in all directions but it only works for the window with focus. So if I want to uh, expand this, I focus this window and go Control Alt H to move it to the left. But if I do Control Alt L to move it to the right, that doesn't work. I actually have to switch focus to the other window. So simply Super H to move to the other window, then Control Alt L for right to expand that window. And that is really clunky that that could be improved a lot the other thing that's really frustrating because i seriously i use this feature all the time is a lot of times i will have a layout that i predefine by doing this shrink and expand i want two windows side by side but one window only needs to be really small and the other window needs to be big so i'll set it up like this right well watch what happens when i close one of these terminals super shift c closes that terminal now let me open a terminal it doesn't remember that I had that layout, you know, the shrink and expand thing going on. Meaning every time I close a window, it's going to forget what I had. And every time, so, and this is, is kind of frustrating because like an Xmonad, you know, I'll do that shrink and expand thing on work, one workspace because I always have the same programs open there and I always want them to be in the same spot. And it will remember even if I close them and then open them later, Xmonad will still remember that that layout is there until I reverse the shrink expand thing to actually make the windows even in size again. BSPWM forgets it as soon as something changes, as soon as you close the window, for example. All of that is gone, and that's annoying if you're constantly coming back to a workspace and constantly having to set that layout manually yourself. One thing I, I should talk about is actually the config for BSPWM. If I go back to the desktop, let me move uh, Doom Emacs here. So this is my SXHKDRC. So the main config file for BSPWM, I, I would say 99% of the time when you're configuring BSPWM, you're actually going to be working in the SXHKDRC, which is the config for the simple X hotkey daemon. So BSPWM is a little weird because BSPWM does not manage its own key bindings. Let me, in this frame, I'm going to open up the actual BSPWM RC. But the BSPWM RC, there's not much to it, right? <laughs> I just scrolled through the whole thing. There's really not much to it. The only thing that's in here, I have an auto start section where some programs get auto started. And then I set up my three monitors with all of the workspaces that I want on the monitors. And then you have some basic window configuration stuff like how big do you want the borders, uh, the gaps between the windows, things like that. Some of the coloring as far as the borders around the windows. And that's pretty much it, right? Most tiling window manager configs, 90% of them are things like key bindings, right? It's what the keys that you press, what they do. And all of that goes in a separate config, the XXHKDRC. And I'm not a fan of that. This is really the only window manager that doesn't manage its own hotkeys, its own key bindings. And I understand the point of them having a separate program, SXHKD, to manage the key bindings. That's kind of the suckless philosophy, right? Uh, you can have your own hotkey daemon, and it's not tied to a particular window manager. Other window managers could use SXHKD as well. But literally, I've never, I've never found a window manager that doesn't manage its own key bindings other than BSPWM. So, well, nice in theory, it's it's not great in practice because really 
VSPWM, I've got to maintain two configs where every other window manager I use, I only have to maintain one config because I can do the key bindings in their own config, you know, as you would expect. And I understand some people, well, with SXHKD, couldn't I just put all of my uh, key bindings for all of my window managers in the SXHKD config? No, because many window managers, they don't have command line programs for some of the functions that they do. Like the reason this works with BSPWM is because BSPWM has a command line program, BSPC, you see, super shift R runs the BSP command, BSP space WM dash R. That's a command line. I, I could open a terminal and type that and it would restart BSPWM. But many window managers don't have such a command line program to operate everything within the window manager so some things you're going to have to put the key bindings in the actual window manager config anyway even if you were trying to put the things that would work in sxhkd you would end up it would end up being more complicated more complex than what it's worth so again i understand why bspwm the thought behind maintaining you know the two different programs bspwm and sxhkd but in practice i think it's rather clunky overall what are my thoughts living in bspwm for the last six weeks it's been enjoyable <laughs> like the, there's some annoying things because some things i've been used to with other window managers because I, i'm so used to dynamic tilers and bspwm is not quite a dynamic tiler but honestly of the quote manual tiling window managers bspwm is definitely my favorite of the bunch um polybar works beautifully in bspwm which you would expect because it's kind of kind of designed for it right everybody that uses bspwm uses polybar so you'd expect polybar to work because you know so much work goes into making those two <laughs> work where that's not the case with many tiling window managers that i've tried uh, polybar is flaky as hell with certain window managers it works really well with i3 it works really well with bspwm but not a lot of the others work really well with polybar overall I, i've got to say i've enjoyed bspwm enough that I, I spent some time working on the configs i've already made some arch package builds for a package for dtos it's going to be called dtos dash bspwm if you install that package if you have the dtos core repository installed you will get the BSPWM configs for my BSPWM and uh, you'll have BSPWM on uh, DTOS if you want it. I've also edited the DTOS installation script. Now when you get to choosing a window manager you have five choices. You have Xmonad, Awesome and Qtile which have always been there. Now you also have BSPWM and I went ahead and added my build of DWM as an option during the DTOS installation as well. And if you want DWM, if you've already got DTOS installed, uh, it's packaged as DTOS-DWM. So this was fun revisiting BSPWM. Uh, if you guys want to see me revisit some of the older window managers that I've used in the past but I haven't taken a look yet in a while, let me know in the comments down below. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Gabe, James, Max, and my homies too bald, Matt, Mimit. Wait, what? My homies too bald? What the hell? Matt, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Royal, Wes, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck, Commander Henry, George, Lee, Methos, Nate, Erjan, Paul, Peace Arch, Vador, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Devler, Willie, and Zenobit. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, me revisiting BSPWM, it probably would have happened anyway, but I still appreciate their support, these guys. I couldn't do what I do without these guys. I also couldn't do what I do without each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. If you guys like my work and want to support me, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. My homie's too bald. What kind of name is that?